How is it going? Alex here from alexsocial.com on the top of a mountain in Norway. It's completely unbelievable as you can see. We have hiked up here, it's actually midnight, the sun is out and I just wanted to introduce this particular video, a Philosophical Monday video about this kind of elastic snapback effect that you have when you're in relationships, about how you kind of come together and you embrace and there's a lot of passion and love in the, the relationship and then you kind of argue, push yourself apart and test each other to the kind of a breaking point where you either break and everything falls apart or you know how to kind of bring it all back together and uh, keep the passion going. So that's kind of a really, really healthy and sustainable thing that I want to talk about once I get off this huge and amazing mountain um, with my gorgeous little comrade over here, Elston as we call them in Norway. Let's get to it. What you say, you, what you've just said there, it's like it's unattractive, it's annoying, it's getting in your bones. Mm. That's because you have some preconceived idea of what a sweet partner should be. Mm. What it should, it's preconceived, but that's not how it is. They have strong hormones going through their body mm. and they want you to continually flex your emotional strength. Mm. Awesome, just come right on in, come right on in, love it. Get in there, get in, get in the game, get right in there. <laughs> Norwegian Dur. Dur camera? What do we do with the camera? Alright, we're back down here on Earth in the center of Oslo at Jungstodere, right outside Culture Huset, where you can see many pickup artists doing boot camps and dirty pickups here on the weekend. And uh, Philosophical Monday about relationships, okay? Let's get philosophical about it, right? So when a guy and a girl together in a boyfriend girlfriend situation, in a marriage situation, um, even if you're seeing a girl, if there's no tension, in the relationship, then it's unarousing, it's unstimulating, it's not exciting, it's boring, and it's probably gonna to cease to exist. But usually, I think this is like a psychological study, is that when you start a relationship, men, men and women start relationships, there's about six months of a certain type of hormone that gives you serious excitement, okay? New person, um, pair bonding, mating, child rearing, childbirth, stuff like that. Cool, but what happens in your relationship? if after six or seven months it starts to get kind of shitty or boring or repetitive or whatever and it could happen in marriage as well this is a blog about pickup right and a lot of people want to know how can they reconcile a relationship with going out and meeting other people and this is part of the reason of how you do it right when when you're going out and you know you know conquering life basically making money acquiring assets uh, learning about yourself, traveling, meeting new people, you want to be pushing your own comfort zone and pushing your boundaries. What can happen as a guy when you're in a relationship is that you're going to get super comfortable with a gorgeous, fun, great, beautiful girl who's going to cook for you, look after you, um, like encourage you to relax, encourage you to chill out and you might become super satisfied and comfortable with where you are in life and that is then going to take the, the, the tension out of your relationship. The way I think about it, in the context of men and women, and I don't want to get too feminist or, or like battle of the sexes debate here, but the way I see it is like the man risks and the woman tells him when he should stop risking, okay? The man wants to conquer other kingdoms, kill other tribesmen, um, try to you know, jump off the biggest cliff and into the water or something like that. And the, the girl's always going to be like, don't be stupid. I always think of like, Homer Simpson and Marge Simpson. Homer's doing this stupid, adventurous, funny, simulating stuff, and Marge is like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why the fuck are you doing these stupid things? But let's relate it back to real life. Now, imagine you're you know, in your late 20s, you've got a gorgeous girlfriend, you're very, very happy, and you're living in an apartment, you're gonna be a little bit too comfortable. You're gonna get into like this daily grind and it's not gonna be enough. You're gonna have an average job, maybe you're like working in a bank, for example. 9 to 5, look at this cool fucking barbecue smoke all over me. 9 to 5, and then every day it's going to be the same kind of thing, and you're going to be understimulated. And it's great, you know, you've established comfort. The chick loves you, you're in decent shape, but it's kind of sliding away. You've got decent money, but it's not that great. What you as the guy should do is to create the tension of quitting that fucking job and trying to start your own job, okay? 
then there's going to be a shitload of tension in the relationship where you're trying to push it and do something new and creative and risky, basically, because you're going to risk losing that existing stable income to trade up and get that much more, okay? And that's going to come with stress, anxiety, unpredictability, and it should come with resolution, all right? Risk and resolution. So when I talk about the tension in the relationship, when you've got too much comfort, it's like, safe zone. But if you say, quit the job, you're going to get this tension because the girl's going to doubt you, you're going to be taking a risk, and you're going to stretch apart, and you're going to feel that tension on one another. If you then succeed and get a new job, set up a business and get it to work, you're going to snap back together, kind of passionately reward one another, and there's going to be that intimacy again, okay, that crazy intimacy, reignited passion, because you push yourself and you achieved it. But at the same time, maybe, maybe you push, you create that tension, you then fail, and then you kind of fall flat on your fucking face. And in my imagination, okay, I've had some relationships, but I've mostly been traveling the world. In my imagination, everybody loves the underdog. Everybody loves the guy who goes for it. If you go and take that huge leap of faith and that risk, and you've got the, you're a visionary type of guy, then the chick is gonna ideally, hopefully, when it breaks and you fail, she's gonna be there for you to help you to get back on your feet. Because you did, honestly, you know, you worked hard, you had everyone's best interest in mind, you wanted the best for yourself and your girlfriend or your partner or whatever it might be. So that's in a business sense. Now what about in a relationship sense? You're, you want to be a social person, you want to meet a lot of people, or maybe you are just simply getting comfortable in the interaction. Just bring them in, bring them into the game. What up? Um, <laughs> just like in their own world. So imagine... Imagine you're super comfortable and very, very satisfied with your girlfriend and she's super hot and she's hitting on a lot of other guys or a lot of, sorry, a lot of other guys are hitting on her. She's always surrounded by other guys. I, when I'm dating girls, that's always happening. In fact, here in fucking Oslo, we see people kind of walking around not really knowing what's socially acceptable. I was holding my girlfriend's hand or the girl that I'm seeing and guys are approaching her by like grabbing the inside of her fucking leg. Like in a bar, um, it's completely inappropriate and rude and probably sexual harassment. So then there's some tension because I'm like, are they going to fucking, uh, are you going to let them do that to you? Should I do something? And I'm like, no, Alex, chill. Alex, keep putting yourself out there. Keep meeting other chicks. Alex, do takeaways from your own girlfriend, basically. So she misses me. So she misses me. It's kind of like a legitimate, literal tension when I'm doing the takeaway and creepy guys are hitting on her. Instead of me getting defensive or upset or whatever, as long as she's not like tongue pashing them or like having sex with them, I'm not stressed out. So I know, I love it. I, let, I want to create that tension in the relationship where she misses me. She, we're, we're kind of playing a game with one another and then we both kind of like succumb to the game. We get over it and boom, back together, emotional, passionate. Uh, kind of reconciliation that happens uh, after we kind of put each other to the test, okay? Tension and testing each other. So uh, the moral of the story is this, don't get too comfortable with your social circumstance or your financial circumstance or in your physique. If you put the time and effort into other things other than your relationship, like your business, your work, your personal development, traveling, meeting other people, that's gonna be time taken away other than your relationship, like your, your wife or your partner or your girlfriend. But that time taken away, for example, if you wanna go on a, if you're living in New York, you wanna go on a boys trip to Vegas or Miami or over to Amsterdam, that's gonna test and add tension in your relationship. You're gonna go over there, you're gonna miss the girl for 10 days, you're gonna come back and you're gonna be like, girlfriend, fuck, I fucking missed you. I want to take you on a trip next weekend, somewhere amazing, the Hamptons, the Rocky Mountains, whatever it might be. And you, you then have that missing effect. You went, you conquered, you bought back a better, refreshed, newer self. And that was because you were willing to kind of break the comfort zone and also kind of like break and argue with your partner. Okay, as a guy, be 100% willing to argue and constantly be questioned because I, like I said, I envision that you should be taking the risk financially, socially, and time even in a way, and I hate to say this and sound misogynistic, but almost kind of like fucking with her expectation of what should be comfortable, knowing that you're going to reward, you're going to create this kind of like a lapse of comfort and then reconcile it passionately and then give her that amazing kind of like tsunami of affection and, 
uh, good attention and doting and appreciation that really is significantly felt with the contrast effect of when you kind of take yourself away or if you let her kind of run free and run wild and be the free spirit. That's another, another way to think about it is I say to my girlfriend, be, well actually I learned this about my most recent girlfriend is that she is a free fucking spirit. I'm like, you're a free spirit, I can't control you, run free and she does. And she's like flirting with other guys, she's dancing sexy, she's a long way from me now, unfortunately, and I'm saying be a free spirit. And that, that distance away from me, that creates kind of a tension that she's feeling and I'm feeling, and that strong missing effect. So let your partner run free, encourage her, book her a fucking trip with her friends, with guys, so she can flirt. And I guarantee that maybe she might grind on guys or almost kiss guys and be up close to other guys. That doesn't matter. And I am so happy that the girls that I've dated seriously in the past and the ones that I'm the one that I'm seeing now, one that I'm seeing now, is that she can get all that awesome attention, but then she kind of doesn't really like it because they don't understand her as well as I do. And then, I, I'm, then I'm reconciling it and adding that passion there at the end. So that's the philosophy of the relationship is that you should constantly be having this tension, reconciliation, tension, reconciliation. And with each of those tensions, you're learning about yourself, learning about each other and learning to miss each other. And then you're getting back together passionately and really enjoying each other again until that tension starts to build again. And that kind of thing should be a sustainable, like perpetuating loop, perpetuating pattern, stronger and more varied and diverse all throughout your entire life, well into old age. Okay. Then, you know, there's children in the picture, there's family, there's finances, there's empires, whatever it could be. I'm still a young man. I'm not even in my thirties yet born in 1985, so this is now 2015, I know that this kind of thing is going to happen as, as life goes on. So don't get lazy in your relationships, don't get lazy with your girlfriends, and be the guy to kind of like fuck with in a fun way, in the same way that we fuck with kids at Christmas. Like Santa's not coming if you're not good. You know, create the tension, be a bit of a jackass, make people laugh, and then relieve her of the tension with the passion and the intimacy again. I'm Alex from Alex Social. Glad that we did this blog. Think it's pretty fucking cool. Hope that you really enjoyed it. Subscribe to this channel for other philosophical topics. There's going to be many more. Sorry about the deepness of it, but hey, on a Monday evening, late at night, somewhere in the world, it's good to, to go deep and learn about all this stuff. Subscribe. Catch you later. Being left out, it's probably because of your upbringing, your culture, you were cast not as the alpha when you were growing up, but you're going to start feeling it in the conversation. And it's really bad because a vibe or a connection or a warmth in a conversation between two people, that's when the conversation is moving forward, you're exchanging ideas, you're enjoying the vibe that you're building together. And then all of a sudden somebody might say, but what if, but, but what if, can I, can I, can I clarify that question?